In this video, we look at environmental control logic in simulation tools and the initial task of dialing in the capacity of environmental controls for a room or a cluster of rooms in a building. Why make a video about this? Well, one of the big strategies and strategies for deploying virtual representations of the built environment is to first explore the patterns of environmental system demand in a building prior to coming up with a short list of candidates for the actual kit. This is especially the case if the site has weather patterns which we are not familiar with. So starting as we mean to go on, we first review the boundary conditions and follow the procedures for list selecting relevant boundary conditions. We want a mix of conditions to test our environmental control regimes against. Let's take a dozen offices in a wing of offices buildings. Here is the model that we're going to use for a number of different videos about control. We see that there's essentially a dozen offices. They are identical other than at the uh, end offices. Um, there's outside walls. If we go into the base case room, which is going to be our initial focus. We see it's populated by furniture and fittings, some shading on the outside, fairly large amount of glass, so it is sensitive to solar radiation. Why use this level of model detail? because our client and the facilities manager wants environmental controls that fit a building in use rather than a system that works well as long as there's a lease available sign outside. A bit of background. Each simulation tool has its own approach to abstract definitions of environmental controls. In ESP, there's a definition of sensors, for example, the thermostat on the wall is more likely to measure resultant or effective temperature than the dry bulb temperature of the air. Let's inject or extract heat from the air in the room. After we learn about the demand patterns, we have the option, of course, to explore mixed convective and radiant delivery. Also on the graph is a schedule, and we take that from the definition of the office hours and set points. Let's say we want to maintain 15 degrees overnight and 20 degrees during office hours on weekdays, reduced hours on Saturday, maybe just frost protection on Sundays, and for cooling the set point, say 26 degrees overnight and maybe 24 degrees during office hours, with a setback on Saturday, Sundays and holidays. Given that schedule, let's begin with a suitably abstract environmental control regime, one that asks little of the user, but which can provide sufficient clues. ESP offers a so-called basic ideal controller, which delivers exactly the heating and cooling needed to satisfy the set points, assuming there is sufficient capacity. Of course, no actual environmental control kit delivers such perfection, but we can cross that bridge later on. Our simulation model is going to include different control logic in each of the rooms, and we'll have made some initial guesses about their attributes but let's not stress about those until we've sorted out the base case room. Let's say our initial capacity guess is two kilowatts in each office for heating and two kilowatts for cooling. We need to test this in each of the seasons to see how well they work. Going into simulation, we have a number of presets. We have an three different winter simulations preset, one with a 15 minute time step, one with a five minute time step, one with a two minute time step, similar things for spring and the summer. To get an initial idea about whether or not that two kilowatt works, let's pick the 15 minute time step and ask for an integrated simulation. So if I ask for that simulation, 
Let's track what's going on in that base case room. Temperature. And run the simulation. And we can see that the we get up slightly above the set point, drifts down, drops out overnight. But in general, we seem to be doing what we've requested. That's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, we have a, a different pattern going on. So let's save those results. And go to Results Analysis. And choose that room, go into graphs, parameter plot, let's plot the weather outside, and uh, when there is sunlight, and then go into the room, put the dry bulb temperature in the room, as well as resultant temperature. Oh, and while we're at it, let's get how much heat's being used, since both heating and cooling loads, and let's draw that. Now, lots of stuff will ride over itself, so what I'm going to do is use the axis scale. And plot that. <coughs> okay, so um, there is our dry bulb temperature, resultant temperature, which is what we have sensed and are controlling too. Um, there's not much sunlight on these days, and there is sunlight toward the latter part. We can see there's a bump up in temperature after the sun, sunny period. Here's what I would expect in terms of heating. In the morning it pops up. Um, yeah, we're not using two kilowatts, we're using something like one and a half. Again, it, it drops down during the day to maintain the set point. St has a brief morning peak. The trick is very brief. And then we've got another peak, and then it starts climbing back up again. On the sunny day, we don't have anything in the latter part of the day. We could probably get by with much less than two kilowatt hours in that room. So the peak we see in inquire about for summary statistics, heat, cool, humidify, uh, sensible heating and cooling loads. If we plot that out for the base case room, maximum value is 1.4. It occurs at basically uh, 6.20 in the morning. Let's see what else is going on in that. If I pick a number of the other rooms, and graph their temperatures. Okay, all over the place. And there's a lot of ratcheting going on on a typical day. Let's zoom in and redraw. Yes, so some of my controls are on-off controls and a 15 minute time step is obviously not a very sticky control situation for them. Um, so we've got our work cut out for us, but at least we know a capacity we want to deal with.